Hello and welcome to EV Platform. Today we're looking at the Peugeot E208. Blake has it out on the road. He's going to do a bit of a range test. He's going to do a bit of a review. And the question we have to ask ourselves is, does he get the WLTP range out of it? You're going to have to stay around till the end. And we're also going to come back into the studio and have a chat about it. Morning, folks. We have another road trip today to check out whether or not a car will hit its WLTP figure. And in this case, we have the Peugeot E20H and the GT spec. So it's time just to jump in the car. We'll give you some of the, the numbers as we hit the road and give you a few updates on the way. And we have a trip today, which is going to be just over 300 kilometers. And we want to find out if we can actually hit or, or even get close to that that 340 WLTP rating that the E208 has. So we've got a trip from my house here, just uh, about 50 kilometers north of Dublin. We're gonna go through the city, up into the Wicklow Mountains for a little spin around, have a bit of fun with the car, see how it feels on the road. Back down the mountains, through Dublin again, and out to my house here where we have to pick up somebody else and head off into the countryside again for a round trip. And the second leg of that is going to actually be tomorrow morning because we're staying somewhere else tonight. Um, it looks like it's going to be about 310 kilometers overall. Um, so we'll see how the car gets along on the way. Some of the ground rules for the journey today. Um, not allowed to break the speed limit, so whatever it is on the road that we're on, we're, we're going to go with that. But within that, we're going to go as, as, as quick as we can, really, as quick as is safely to do. Uh, with one exception, which is on the motorway, we're going to limit it to 100 kilometers an hour. Now, I've left my house at about half seven on a weekday morning, so we're likely to hit a good bit of traffic, especially as we approach Dublin, the capital. So we may not even have the choice to, to get up to that 100 kilometer an hour speed. Otherwise, there's no, yeah, no hyper mile and we're going to have a bit of fun off from the traffic lights when we can, up in the mountains, we're going to stick it into a few corners, get a real feel for how the car handles. The E208 has one little feature that really, really frustrates me, so let's get it out of the way right now, and it's going to hamper what we're doing today as well. It tells you the range, or what's left in, in the battery, in terms of estimated range. At the moment, 338 kilometers, but it doesn't give us a battery percentage. Now, I, I know I just left my house, I left on 100%, got charged it up overnight, but I don't know how that's dropping. So I might look at that in a few minutes and go, well, is that 95 or is it 87%? You can't exactly tell, which is gonna hamper what we're trying to do today and give you guys exact updates, but we'll do our best along the way. Good time now at the start of the journey to just give a rough outline of, of what's under, the, what's under the, the car here in terms of battery. So, We've got a 50 kilowatt hour battery in the E208, 45 of which is usable. So like, you know, every electric car, they keep that buffer there. Uh, in this case, it's five kilowatt hours. We're still left with 45 and it gives a WLTP range of 340 kilometers. Good time for an update. We have gone through Dublin. The other side of the city now and we are about to head up into the Wicklow Mountains which is going to absolutely destroy the the average consumption so we thought we'd just give you an update at this moment we have done 64 kilometers to get here now as I said earlier on I don't know the battery percent just doesn't give it to me but I'm looking at that now and I would guess that it is on 80 percent so could be 77, could be 83, but my guess is 80%. And the guessometer says that we've got 286 kilometers of range left. Average consumption is 12.8 kilowatt hours for every 100 kilometers we've done so far. Time for another update. We have come up to the source of the river Liffey again, just like we did with the Honda E there a few weeks ago. Thought we'd jump out of the car, have a look around. Have a look at the Peugeot as well. The weather is absolutely miserable, so we're not going to stay out here and do as much recording as we wanted to. Let's get back into the car and look at some of the numbers because we are sitting at just over 500 meters above sea level. We've got 15 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers as our average consumption. The indicated range left on the car is 214 kilometers. Now, as I said before, we can't see the battery percentage, but looking at that there now, my guess is that it's at 
So we've used 30% of the battery to do about 87 kilometers. So I think we're, we're kind of looking okay because we know we're going back downhill now. We're gonna get a lot of regen on the way. And we'll catch up with you again for another update later on. Good time to have a quick chat about the motor and what actually drives the, the E208. We've got a 100 kilowatt motor in the car. It turns out 136 horsepower and 260 newton meters of torque. So this car is certainly no slouch. Um, now the rulebook has been redefined by EVs and some of the speeds that, that they're attaining is just incredible. But this car will still do the 0 to 100 kilometer per hour sprint in just over eight, eight seconds. So that's pretty quick. You know, when you compare it to your average car on the road, that's, it moves. Um, but the great thing about the E208, and I've got the GT spec in, in this at the moment, so it feels great inside, but you get the same motor and the same battery pack in, in the other versions as well. But what I love about this is just how it feels on the road. It's called the GT and uh, it, it, it really, it just drives so, so well. It's just over 1500 kilos in weight. Now, by EV standards, that's not heavy at all. In fact, that, that might even be light. I had the Honda E there a few weeks ago, which is about the same weight. But I mean, some of the EVs, especially the SUVs now, are open to the, the two and a half ton mark. And because of that extra bit of weight, Peugeot have made the decision just to, to really tighten up the suspension and you can feel it. Now, some people might complain about that a little bit. So it's just a little bit uncomfortable going over ramps and bumps. You can really feel it. And yes, that's a very fair comment. But as I'm up here now in mountain passes, um, down country roads, just moving around corners, I'm so happy to have it. It just feels so, so planted. And then you get that, end, that acceleration, that instant torque, 136 horsepower coming in behind it once you're, you're releasing out of corners. Uh, it's, it's a really fantastic drive. And yeah, I've driven a few cars over the last few weeks now. Some of them, you know, my old Nissan Leaf or the, the MG5, the, uh, the Honda E as well. But this one, yeah, Honda E was pretty good. Felt great to drive, well, rear wheel motor, similar power to this. But um, this one just feels like a bit more of a driver's car when you're out on country roads like this. And the steering wheel, is, is, it's quite small. It's flat at the top and, and the bottom. Um, and it, it just feels a little bit more nimble, a little more, a little more precise. It only takes a smaller movement of the steering wheel just to put it into corners. Uh, yeah, it feels, feels really, really good. Mini update for you because we just got to the bottom of the Wicklow Mountains as we're coming through Dublin. Have a look at those numbers. They have dropped massively down to 13 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. You can see the amount of regen there on the graphs that they show you. And we have got an estimated 232 kilometers left. And having done 105, that puts us at that puts us at 335 kilometers range. So it's actually, it's kind of looking all right now, but we're gonna head back out onto the motorway in the not too distant future, and that's gonna hurt the numbers again. So we'll catch up with you again later. So we've just pulled back into uh, my driveway, and that's about halfway through our, our trip. So we thought we'd give you another update now. So we have done 13.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers on the journey so far. Uh, the car is telling us that we have, let's have a look at it there, 172 kilometers of range left. And just judging by the dials, I'd say that we've, we've kind of used 47% of the battery. Looks like there's just over half left. And we have done a total of about 155 kilometers. So we are... It looks good that we'll do the whole journey overall, you know, to get just past that 300 kilometer mark. I don't think we're going to make the WLTP of 340 kilometers. But having said that, we've done a bit of a motorway stretch as well. And we had a little bit of fun up in the Wicklow Mountains, throwing the car into some corners. So um, there you go. There's your update and we'll catch you again later on. Another update. We've just pulled into Monaghan town. So we have an average of 14.4 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. And the range indicated we are, what it looks like on the dial, bang on about 25% quarter of the charge left. And it's indicating that it, that will give us 84 kilometers. And the overall odometer is up to 1,106. So I said that's about 240 kilometers done so far, thereabouts. So, uh, it looks like we probably wouldn't make it back home on the full charge. Um, 
There you go. Catch you on the next update. Time for another update. We were just about to leave to head back home, but we've decided while we're here in town because we just want to go and get ourselves a, a little bit of lunch to plug into one of the the slower AC points. Now, it was borderline whether or not we'd make it back because when we plugged in here, we had 25% of the battery um, and the car was estimating that we'd have 112 kilometers of range left, which I know is not true out of 25% of this battery. Um, the gasometer is why is how the car indicates that 112, and that was judging it off the last five or 10 minutes of our journey before we stopped last night, which happened to be very much downhill into the town where we were staying. So it really overestimated it. Um, I knew we had 85 kilometers to get home. The car was indicating 112, but I also knew it was not possible. And this is one of the reasons that people give out about electric cars. So, well, the car told me 112 and it didn't get that. Uh, and that's very much true. So we do need cars to be better. It's a, it's a fault of the Peugeot that it doesn't show the battery percentage, which would make someone really overestimate it in this case. So yeah, we'll take a, a few minutes here, go and get ourselves um, a little refreshment and a bit of lunch and hit the road after that with, with just about enough to, to actually get, get home even though the car will be indicating that there's loads. And we'll catch up with you again later on. Another little update as we're approaching home because I'm getting a little bit worried now. I only charged it up to, I think it was about 33, 34% before we left earlier on, thinking that, oh, that's plenty just to get home and then it'll be close enough to get a feel for the range. But just having been driving now, we are down to 10 kilometers of range. I can't even tell what percentage is left in the battery, but we have 18 or 20 kilometers to get home. So we're absolutely not gonna make it as it stands, but I know where we are, we're like 120 meters above sea level and my house is, is a lot lower. So um, we're gonna get back into the town beside where I live, should do, not sure. Uh, and we can grab a charge then if it looks like it's it's getting really, really close. Had not anticipated him in this close. Uh, no, of course, he never would have done this in a normal a normal journey. He would have stopped and actually just got a, a full charge um, back where we were. I cut it short on purpose, but didn't mean to cut it this short. Anyway, we'll catch you again in a few minutes. So we have limped down into the town close to where I live. Uh, the battery is, is almost empty. It's indicating that there's four kilometers left and that's based on a, a downhill journey into town. Uh, so this has been really, really close. Uh, average consumption since we left the hotel earlier on, 13.7. Um, I might be able to make it the last three or four kilometers back to my house, uh, but I'm just, just not gonna risk it. It's not worth it. We're here in town, we've got something to do anyway. So let's plug it in. And I think that's the last update for this little trip. So this is interesting, just plugged in the car swipe there, got back in and I only plugged in a few seconds ago and it's actually indicating that there's 4% left but four kilometers to drive. Now we just know that's not the case because if this car does you know about, about 300 kilometers on a charge we know then that you get about three kilometers distance for every one percent of the battery in it which is actually about 12 percent 12 kilometers according to that so it turns out that in the end we did have about 10 kilometers to spare um you always suspect that these cars keep something in in reserve but, uh yeah we're gonna leave it here for a while let it get up to you know a level where we can we can get home easily, uh, which we can anyway now that I think about it, so I'm just gonna stop that. Just offer a thought as well. I'm out in the E208, and I'm gonna be dropping this home first thing in the morning. I've clocked up 800 kilometers, so just under 500 miles in the week that I've had it now. And I just wanted to say that it's really grown on me. I remember when I got it home first, you know, I did 50 kilometer journey to get it home, and. And I was going to, yeah, it looks fantastic, but, uh, you know, it's a couple of few things just frustrating me a little bit. But over the course of the week, you know, you do put 500 miles into a car, you get used to it. You get used to the, the cruise control, sat nav, you know, all these little quirks and differences in each car. And, and it's grown on me more and more. And, you know, I'm, I'm kind of sorry to give it back tomorrow now because uh, I've had a, such, a, such a good time with it. And especially the last day or two once I got used to it. So... Um, I think for the right person, this is an absolutely superb car. It's got six kids, don't buy it. Just the two of you. You know, you do 10,000 miles a year or something like that. Never really do long motorway journeys. This is, it's top notch. 
So they were my thoughts on the E208 there. Derek, you actually had the car for, was it a few weeks or a few months even? Uh, what did you make of what I said in the video? Do you agree, disagree? What, what are your thoughts on the car, basically, is what I'm asking? Yeah, one of my first long-term reviews, it was about four months I had the Peugeot E208. I really liked it. Um, I liked the space. We all think we want bigger cars, bigger batteries, SUVs, etc. This was perfect for what I needed it for. Did a couple of cross countries, did a lot of urban driving. So really good. I like the quality of feel. But one of the couple of things I would have liked like an automatic handbrake, uh, but they're only small legally things. I have a full review up on the channel uh, uh, over on EV Review Ireland, but otherwise really, really happy with it. And I think it's a great car and all rounder. And you can see why traditionally those size of cars were always a great seller. I remember the 206 sold mm -hmm. X amount of cars every couple of minutes at one stage. So Hopefully you've enjoyed today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you leave a comment, like the video. And if you know of somebody that's thinking about buying a Peugeot E208, make sure you share it with them. This has been EV Platform. Thank you very much for watching.